And now from the Freedom First Sports Desk, it's First and Ten with John Apicello. Sponsored by... Welcome to week four of the big show and with our game of the week last night, an epic 55 to 51 Hidden Valley win over Glenver to move to 4-0. We are channeling Remember the Titans tonight because according to Greek mythology, the Titans were greater than even the gods. They ruled the universe with absolute power. Speaking of ruling, Jeff Williamson rules the web world. Check out his tireless work on WSLS.com first and 10 for all your high school football needs, which brings us to the second of three Game of the Week worthy contests this week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we've got one for you. Appomattox is the defending Class 2 state champs. Lord Botetot, state runner-ups in Class 3. Both teams have losses, but both return a lot of talent to make yet another run, and the two would meet tonight. Let's get you out to Appomattox and... Folks, they love their football there and the power of one. Here we go. Grayson Peterson to Jaquan Walker. He's a rolling ball of butcher knives, and he is into the zone. Some tough running by the Raiders and coach Doug Smith, and they are still Smith strong in Appomattox. Back in possession, LB bringing the D. Jonathan Penix meet Bryce Harrison, who strips the ball out. LB in business. Here we go. Fourth and eight. We get a karate kid move here. Balance Daniel's son. Joey Isaacs keeps his balance. And look at him go. He's taking it in. And LB fighting back. Too much Appomattox, though, because they have too much Jaquan Walker. Bringing the power punch right there. All the effort. Appomattox showing their muscle. 35-14 in a good game tonight. How about Salem at Northside tonight? The Vikings in the Blue Ridge. Salem, of course, the River Ridge power. First quarter off a fake punt. Cam Leftwich rumbling up the middle. It's 7-0 Spartans. Still in the first, Northside's quarterback Lawrence Cole going to Nathan Funk here for the nice gain. But a few plays later, Cole going to be picked off by Carson Williams on the rollout. And there's the pick. Second quarter, Salem taking command. This is Javion Jones up the middle. It's 14-0. It would go that way the rest of the way. How about 42 to nothing? Salem victorious over the Vikings. Also in the Blue Ridge, Stanton River 46-6 over Tunstall. And the River Ridge, Christiansburg 28-20 as they make a trip to Central Wise. Folks, it's a weekend of rivalry and championship games, including the independent school rivalry in the Star City North Cross. Traveling to Roanoke Catholic tonight, Vineyard Park. Here we go for this one. Keep in mind the Raiders 2-1 and one coming in. And on the second play of the game, this is Camden Johnson strolling in to make it 7 to nothing Raiders. Johnson, a force to be reckoned with. Here he goes, and it's 14 nothing North Cross. A little bit later on, Ivor Hawbotten right here to Ashton Cornett. The Raiders offense dominating the night. How about 48 to nothing? your final? This one all North Cross this evening. An interesting collision in Lexington where the former Bath County and William and Mary star quarterback Jake Phillips, who coached at James River, you recall, is now at Stanton High, and he pays a visit to Rockbridge County. So with that said, there's Coach Phillips, and here we go because Rockbridge County has got an aerial attack. Miller J dropping back, and it's a bullet to Isaiah Williams, 22-yard strike. 7-0 Wildcats. Rockbridge again. Miller J going downfield. This Keswick Owens, 32-yard thing of beauty. It's 13-0. Second quarter, more Miller J. Watch him go across the middle to Turner Cook. Don't call me just a cook. I'm a chef, so call me gourmet. That's a 31-yard touchdown pass. It's 20 to nothing. Stanton High School storming right back. Walker Darby to the corner. Jaquante Scott. Sprinting on out for a 69-yard touchdown. It's 20 to 8, but Rockbridge off the kick return gets it in gear. How about Andre Poindexter? Watch him shift gears after contact right there and look at him go to maximum RPMs. 27 to 8 is the score. And why not one more time? The Wildcats passing game. Miller J to the gourmet. 
Turner Cook, 44-yard touchdown pass. It's 47 to 8. Rockbridge is a winner. We want to mention Coach Poston not on the sideline tonight. He's got an illness in the family. We want to wish everybody the best in that situation. That said, we've got Piedmont scores tonight. Franklin County over Magna Vista for their first win. And Halifax, a big win at home over Parkview. The Eagles on the road in the Palmetto State Nation. Ford is in South Carolina. But nonetheless, it's 46-31. G-Dub with the victory. Dogwood District scores for you. How about Martinsville over Dan River? 31-28. And Nelson Downs Cumberland tonight, 20-16. More scores for you. Amelia County, too tough for Alta Vista. And Central Lunenburg over William Campbell, 49 to 14. Finally, more Dogwood Piedmont crossover games. Chatham Falls at Patrick County, 34 to 28. Attitude reflects leadership, Captain. In Radford, we'll see if the Bobcats can lead the way for the Three Rivers District tonight. In Parisburg, the battle for Giles County tonight brings some rivalry attitude, if you will. And later, rivals collide in Brookville, where the Cavaliers come a calling. Plus this. We're the Floyd County Buffaloes, and you're watching First in Ten. All right, it's Allegheny at Cave Spring, and it's homecoming. So congrats to all third quarter. It's all Cave. Cameron Parker running in for a touchdown right here. Too easy. He's galloping through the defense. It's 41 0. A little bit later on, Alabama, uh, Allegheny's quarterback, Cole Caldwell, is picked by it's, Br it's Braden Gramada. Nice interception here. Next Cave Spring drive after the pick. Jackson Steffen. Look at him gallop and turn on the juice right there. This one, all cave spring. 48 to 8 is your final, but Allegheny, frankly, a relative newcomer to the Three Rivers Brook, but the old guard in action tonight as well. Radford and Giles and Floyd and Glenver last night. These are all programs that are power programs and have been around and been great as long as I've been here. So we get to see them all tonight as they start jockeying for position. Yes, and we get to see them back to back to back. Started with Glenver last night, but let's head to Radford. Buckle in for this roller coaster, guys. Galax at Radford, second quarter. Radford up 13-7. Marcel Baylor gonna hold on to it, scrambling to the left, breaking a tackle now to the right. First down, Bobcats setting them up for this score. Baylor with the keeper takes it 17 yards for the touchdown. Radford goes up 22-7. Galax trying to fire before half. Ian Ashworth swinging out to the left finds Luke Belcher wide open up the middle. He gets the first down. They will settle for a field goal here to make it 20-10 at half. This game goes into overtime. Galax comes back to win it 34-27. All right, over in Giles County, look at that beautiful view. Oh, my goodness, Giles versus Narrows, both teams 3-1. and one. Narrows quarterback Aiden McLaughlin tipped and picked up by the Giles defender. Nice work. More Spartans, Kalik Saunders, single wing, long run, nearly to the goal. Spartans rolling in this half, then Giles, number 12, Gage Fleeman. Here he comes to the right of your screen. Scampers in for the touchdown. It was 27-0 at the half. Giles wins it 41 to 6. All right, over in Floyd, Coach Bill Field dedicated to the GOAT tonight. Fort Chiswell at Floyd. Caleb Fenton drops back, runs to the right, pass to Ryan Swartzel down the sideline for a nice gain. All right, still in the first quarter. Pioneers handoff to Ezra Varney. Dodging tacklers left and right, coming right into your living room. Nice Jets, man. Then Taylor's going to throw. Up the middle to Tyler Quigger, but it bounces off his hands and into Floyd's for Forest Beagle for the interception. And it is still scoreless, but let's check it out. Fake handoff, and Fenton keeps it, punches it mm, in for the nice touchdown. Play. Finally, right? <laughs> yeah, nice play. <laughs> Floyd wins this one 18 to 6. More scores. George with 27, Carroll County 20 in two overtimes. Appy, oh my goodness. Yeah, great game, and and if I may interject a personal opinion, they need to name a street after Coach Beal, too. Uh, I, I think it should be like 
Coach Beal Drive up right. to Coach Beal Stadium. That would be fine with me. Yes, agreed. Think, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, folks, I don't scratch my head unless it itches, and I don't dance unless I hear some music. I will not be intimidated. We'll see if either the Bees or the Cavs blink tonight in more rivalry action when we come back. All right, it's Eastmont at Auburn tonight. We got an early look at Seth Burleson turning the corner. And once he gets the corner, see ya! Look at him go. 60-plus yards to the end zone for six. Now, on the kickoff, how about Auburn flashing some skills, some speed, some talent? It's Isaiah Keith. Isaiah Keith. Yeah, following his blockers. Nice move right there. We'll speed it up. Look at him go all the way down to the 20. But this drive would stall. Now this is Gage Akers, the keep after the snap. He's going to walk on in for the touchdown, extending Eastmont's lead to 31 to nothing as he pinballs in. Landon Mars dropping back, throwing up the middle. This one's going to be picked. Eastmont goes on to the victory, 31-0 is your final another pioneer district score for you james river 34 32 over covington great game huh the knights getting it done by two tonight all right the lynchburg and campbell county schools all have long histories brookville jf and and folks they've been battling for over 50 years that said opening minutes of the game you're getting a look at tayshawn butler on the carry and he is gone, and it's 7 OBs. Now, later, you remember Drake McDaniel, former player of the week, connecting with Ethan Roby, taking advantage down the sideline. Here he comes running right at you. Brookville had the lead 13-0. But this one, hold on. Here comes JF. Cavaliers on the 19, second and five. Josiah Bell finding Brody Jackson with a defender on him. That's going to set up first and goal. Three plays later, Alexander Marsteller pounding it in the end zone. Cavs get on the board. It's 13-7. Still first quarter. Cavs fourth and inches. Bell tricks the defense, tricks our cameraman, throws the pass to Jackson. JF scores. They led this game 14-13. But the Bees would get it going the rest of the way. How about Tayshawn Butler with a pick six? Watch him. It wasn't an ordinary pick six where you just make the pick and run right in. Look at him weave through the entire offense, which Amazing. becomes the defense, <laughs> and he gets in. Brookville goes on to a 68-14 to 14 win tonight. The Bees are certainly a force to be reckoned with. That said, Liberty suffers their first loss. They go on the road, and they run into a red-hot Amherst County Lancer team. How about 34-0 is your final? Now, LCA in Rustburg has been moved to Monday at 7. We hope we can bring you that one. That said, we've got another big Seminole District game that was moved as well. We thought it was going to be tonight for a little while, but then... <laughs> Some bad news if you look at it that way, right? Um, anytime, Brooke, somebody plays for something, a cup, a jug, a bucket, a trophy, I'm interested because I immediately know it's a big deal to someone. Well, this has been a big deal for a long time, the jug. Right, and it seems like anytime there's like an item involved, I'm right. there as You're well. There. Like, there you go. I'm it's usually looking for the trophy somewhere, but right. yeah, the Jug Bowl, it's always one of my favorite rivalries because the Seminole District locked and loaded with talent, yeah. especially on these two teams. And you want to ask, you know, how would you describe this rivalry in one word? So I asked the players, let's find out. Decided. It's intense. Lit. The longest standing rivalry in City Stadium history is back on Saturday, the Jug Bowl between EC Glass and Heritage. It's, fun. it's actually fun because, you know, like we've been playing since we was little and stuff. It's like so you like you just want to bring it all out now and see what they got now and stuff. And while it's fun going up against old friends, the Jug isn't the only thing at stake. Bragging rights, you know, we know each other, like I said, our whole life. So it's just who's better. The Hilltoppers are 3 and 0 heading into the matchup and the Pioneers only loss is to Class 4 powerhouse Dinwiddie, but all records go out the window when they take the field in under 24 hours. What what you can count on Bradley doing though, they're going to be physical up front, offensively and defensively. They're going to be able to control the line of scrimmage, the strategy, what's the play he's going to call, what's the trick triggered the chicanery <laughs> what's the, what's he got up his sleeve he's always got he's always got something up his sleeve 
and I do too. Well, I think that, uh, you know, whenever Woody's been calling the offense, they're pretty daggone good. And he hasn't called the offense in the last couple, three or four years. Um, so I know he's going to give us some wrinkles. I know some things he's going to do. Uh, but at the same time, he's got something up his sleeve. And the rivalry can be summed up best by Coach Woody. Beautiful. One word, this rivalry is beautiful. It's a double overtime type game. It's a game of inches. And we got to fight, we got to claw, we got to scratch, we got to dig for that inch. And, and they're going to do the same thing. That's what makes it such a great rivalry. It's beautiful. It's football. Oh, I got chills <laughs> listening to Woody talk awesome. about that. It's such an incredible game. That one kicks off at 2 p.m. tomorrow at City Stadium. Let's head to some scores. Last night, I was at Glenver Hidden Valley, the longest game in America. Hidden Valley wins it 55-51. William Fleming and Patrick Henry are playing tomorrow at 1 p.m. I will be at that game. And next week, Randolph Henry is at Nelson County Tuesday at 7 p.m. And GW Danville is at Dinwiddie Tuesday at 7 p.m. as well.